alone. When the sun was going down, Ernst and his mother sat in the door of their cottage, talking to each other. They had only to lift their eyes, and there it was, plain to be seen, the miles away, with the sunshine brightening all its features. What is the great stone face, Mom? The great stone face was a work of nature. When viewed at a proper distance, they resemble the features of a human face. If we go too near, we cannot see the outline of the great stone face. Mother, I wish that it could speak, for it looks very pleasant. If I see ever a man with such a face, I should love him very much. If an old prophecy should come to pass, we may see a man sometime with exactly such a face as that. What prophecy do you mean, dear mother? At some future day, a child should be born here, here who was destined to become the greatest in manhood, should be an exact resemb resemblance to the great stone. Oh, mother, I do hope that I shall live to see him. Perhaps you may. And Ernst never forgot the story that his mother told him. It was always in his mind when he looked upon the great stone face. There went a rumor throughout the valley that the great man who was to bear a resemblance to the great stone face had appeared at last. It seems that many years before, a young man had left the valley and settled at a distant seaport, Gathergold, which was his name. People say that gather gold is the resemblance of the great stone face. Let's see when he comes to our valley. Hello, my dear people of this valley. I am gather gold, Mr. Great Gather Gold. It would take a hundred years to count my wealth. Now tell me, I am not the likeness of the great stone face. Here comes the great Mr. Gather Gold. The very image of the great stone face. Sure enough. The old prophecy is true. Here we have the great man at last. I don't see the likeness between gather gold and the great stone face. Why are people thinking like that? Fear not, Ernst. Fear not. He'll certainly come in your future. The years went on and Ernst grew to be a young man. He extracted little notice from the inhabitants of the valley. They saw nothing remarkable in his way of life, except that when the labor of the day was over, he still loved to gaze upon the great stone face. By this time, poor Mr. Gathergold was dead and buried. His wealth, which was the body and the spirit of his existence, has disappeared before his death. Since the melting away of his gold, it has been generally agreed that there was no likeness. It so happened that another son of the valley had become a soldier many years before. After a great deal of hard fighting, he was now a famous commander. He was known on the battlefield by the name Blood and Thunder. It's the same face exactly. Wonderful like it. That's a fact. Why not? He's the greatest man of this or any other age. We are in any doubt. Oh, I'm so pleased to be back to my valley. I'm called Blood and Thunder. Don't I have the likeness of the great... Ernst was also in between the people, but he was not able to see the Blood and Thunder's face. At last, when he was able to see, he thought... Why am I not able to recognize the resemblance of the great stone face in Blood and Thunder? Fear not, Ernst. Fear not. Hell come. man but not in vain had he grown old more numerous than the white hairs on his head were the wise thoughts in his mind and Ernst has ceased to be obscure unsought for undesired had come the fame which so many seek he had become famous beyond the limits of the valley while Ernst had been growing old God had granted a new poet to this earth he too was a native of the valley but had spent the greater part of his life in distant cities, pouring out his sweet music everywhere. The songs of the poet found their way to Ernst. He read them after his customary toil, seated on the bench before his cottage door. As he read, he lifted his eyes to the mountain. Oh, great stone face, is this man not worthy to be your like man? I wish to meet Mr. Ernst. His character, his nobleness, his wisdom and his simplicity of life. Above, above, I must meet him. Good evening. 
can you give a travelers for a night shelter? Gladly, I think I never saw the great stone face look so hospitably at a stranger. You have read this poem? You know, for me I wrote them. Why are you so sad? Because all through my life I have avoided the fulfillment of a prophecy. And when I read this poem, I hope that it might be fulfilled in you. You hope for the fine me, the likeness of the great stone face. I am not worthy to be its likeness. Why not? Are these thoughts not worthy for it? You can hear in them the distant voice of a heavenly song. But, I, but my life here earns has not corresponded with my thoughts. I have had grand dreams, but they have been only dreams. Sometimes I lack faith in my own thoughts. Why then, pure seeker of the good and true, should you hope to find me in the face of the mountain? Okay. We have an evening meeting with the people. Let's go. Through a look of familiar kindness around upon his audience, he began to speak to the people what was in his heart and mind. His words had power because they agreed with his thoughts. And his thoughts had reality and depth because they harmonized with the life which he had always lived. It was not mere breath that the preacher uttered. They were the words of life. A life of good deeds and selfless love was melted into them. The poet, as he listened, felt that the life and character of Ernst were a nobler strain of poetry than he had ever written. His eyes were filled with tears and he said to himself that never was there so worthy a sage as that mild, sweet, thoughtful face with the glory of white hair diffused about it. Behold, behold, Ernst is himself the likeness of the great stone face. Yes, he is. Oh, at the last, the prophecy is fulfilled. But Ernst, having finished what he had to say, walked slowly homeward, still hoping that some wiser and better man than himself would by and by appear, bearing the resemblance to the great stone face.